The BMW Championship, Olympia Fields in Illinois outside of Chicago. It is complete and Max Homa has the lead at 10 under. Has a two shot lead over Chris Kirk. You see they're tied for third, T3, Matt Fitzpatrick and Brian Harmon. And then tied for fifth, got four guys there. Scheffler, Fowler, English uh, and Rose. Actually five guys there and Rory McIlroy. who had a good first round there with the 65. But how about Max Homa? 10 birdies and two bogeys. Tied a... Uh, course record here, PGA course record that Olympia feels with that 62, had six birdies on the back nine. So Max Homa uh, right now has a two shot lead heading into the weekend moving day over Chris Kirk. All right, let's go ahead and bring in Mike McClure, uh, sports line data analyst and also Doug Bell, CBS Sports uh, golf analyst. And uh, let's start with you, uh, Doug. And how about Max Homa here? Uh, had a, a course record today, uh, tied his uh, career best uh, lowest round uh, on PGA Tour with the uh, the 60, uh, 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 two today. Uh, just the 10 birdies there, the two bogeys. How good was Max Homa out there at Olympia Fields? Larry, this was one of those days where every time they posted a score of another birdie, the players were all looking at the scoreboard going, what course is Max Homa playing? Because he's not playing Olympia Fields that we're playing. It was an astonishing performance. Uh, again, we should emphasize Olympia Fields is a difficult, long par 70, and the rough is brutal. Now, the greens are soft because of the rains, but Max Homa played brilliantly, matching his career low. Again, you mentioned it at 62 with 10 birdies on this tough track. Uh, the putter was just so hot. The hottest it's been all year for Homa, who's won twice, by the way. So he goes into Saturday at 10 under par. That's the lowest 36 hole score he's ever recorded in his PGA Tour career. He's done it three times, uh, or he's held the 36 hole lead three times this season. So he's comfortable in that position. Uh, he certainly is familiar with the surroundings being on top heading into the weekend. But the one thing is you watch all these putts roll in and you look at this amazing scorecard. I, I just rarely ever see a player duplicate that kind of putting performance. Uh, he's not gonna fall way behind or anything. And he's not gonna shoot some uh, outlandish score tomorrow over par. But I think Max Homa, if he shoots even par tomorrow, will be a good follow up to what has to be one of the best rounds that he's ever played in his life. I'm right there with you, Doug. I think this is going to go down in one of the best rounds of his career. Uh, I do not expect a duplicate result going forward here. And that's some of that's evident if you look across the live strokes gain categories here. I would like to have seen him do some of this while actually gaining a lot from tee to green, not just having all of it being the putting variance. And I will say it may not be fair to call it variance, However, I think it is when you see only one player really doing that here. I think he had just an incredible round where he gained over four strokes putting. I think that a normal good round in these conditions at this level of golf would be gaining about two strokes on the putting green. Uh, I think it's going to allow him to be competitive and relevant the rest of the weekend here. However, I do not think he should be the strong, strong favorite that he is going forward. I think it's very difficult to duplicate what he just did. Yeah, and Max Holman, the uh, only player in the field to not card a five or a higher uh, in the second round there uh, on Friday as well. So uh, he's had a 36-hole lead, the lead or the co-lead, uh, three times now this year. Uh, the other two times, he has a win and then a second-place finish. So uh, he's learned, uh, and he did finish uh, uh, this uh, season here for Max Homa. All right, guys, let's look at the chase pack. We'll start with you, Doug. Uh, who do you like here with this chase pack? You look at Chris Kirk, 66, very, very even there. Uh, with his rounds here, back-to-back -back 66 for him. Bogey-free round, the only one uh, on the, uh, the day here on that leaderboard there. But you also got eight gals within five shots, Doug. Who do you like here in the chase pack on this leaderboard that could maybe reel in Max Homan? Well, Larry, I love the uh, playoffs, top 50 now, and yet a lot of good players. That's why they're in the top 50, right? So the chase pack is absolutely loaded. And while Chris Kirk and Matthew Fitzpatrick have played very well, uh, the best they played in, in quite some time in the PGA Tour, I just don't see them sustaining that level of excellence heading into the weekend. So I'm really looking at the guys that are five under par and you got some big names. Uh, let's start with Rory McIlroy. Now, here's a guy who had that amazing opening round where he hit only three fairways and still wound up with a round of five under par. Today, he hit a few more fairways, uh, but just couldn't get the putter going. But nevertheless, he shoots even par. So I think Rory uh, is right where he wants to be heading into the weekend. And, and again, if you heard his comments after the round, he said, I'm really putting it well. Just nothing went in. And the swing feels really, really good. And when I hear Rory talk about his swing, he feels good about the way he's putting. 
I like his chances of making a move. And, and Scotty Scheffler, guys, uh, again, an amazing performance from Tita Green. Hit 16 of 18 greens for the second day in a row. He's number one in strokes gained proximity, just under 24 feet. At Olympia Fields, that, that is amazing. Uh, putting, though, out of 50 players, he right now ranks 41st for the week in strokes gained. Uh, I think sooner or later, Scotty Scheffler, he's going to be there because he keeps hitting greens. And sooner or later, the golf gods got to open up that hole, right? And sooner or later, the putts have to start falling for Scotty Scheffler, I believe. Yeah, Scheffler, Fowler, Rose, and McElroy there. Uh, Mike, uh, give me a third-round matchup that you're looking at here at Olympia Fields heading into Saturday moving day. Uh, I'm going to bet against Max Homa. I, I like what I've seen from Chris Kirk. And I, I will say with Doug, I love Scotty Scheffler in this tournament as well. I think he ultimately wins it. Uh, but Chris Kirk has been right there. The most important metric for me mid-tournament like this is still going to be strokes gained tee to green. He's been incredibly consistent. You see the bogey free ground here. He is awesome strokes gained tee to green right now. But what we have in the betting market, we have a price point of plus 130 against Max Homa. Max Homa already had some name value working in his favor over Chris Kirk in this particular spot. Now you throw in that awesome round that Max Homa just had where he gained over four strokes on the putting greens. I think he's simply overvalued. I priced this one at plus 110. I think it's an excellent value play here in round three at plus 130 on Chris Kirk. Yeah, Chris Kirk just two shots back there. Bogey free round, 66 there. Uh, headed into the uh, this tournament here, 29th in the FedEx Cup standing. So uh, the top 30 move on uh, next week there to the uh, the Tour Championship. So he's uh, in pretty good shape here. All right, let's get a guys. Uh, let's get a good pick to win here. We'll start with you, Doug Bell, our CBS Sports golf analyst, uh, the guy that knows everything uh, on golf here. <laughs> who do you like to win, Doug? I'm listening to you intently here, man, because you've been on fire. Who, who you got? Well, again, the chase pack is loaded with stars, and I'm looking for consistency. Not so much uh, the guy who's gotten hot lately like Lucas Glover, uh, although he's in position again. But I like the guy who's been really good all season long, and that's Ricky Fowler. The last 17 rounds on the PGA Tour playing some pretty tough spots. Uh, he's par or better 17 consecutive rounds. Ricky has put himself in position now to get to the Tour Championship for the first time since 2019. Remember, he broke into the winner's circle at the Rocket Mortgage just a few weeks ago, first time in over four years. So everything is pointing uh, towards Ricky Fowler winning again and obviously making that Ryder Cup team down the road. Uh, but I like Ricky Fowler this week. Uh, everybody's talking about Rory and Scheffler and everybody else. Let's not forget about the man who's been very consistent all season long, Ricky Fowler. And I just think his game is in a really, really good spot right now. I love that, Doug. I actually played Ricky Fowler pre-tournament over on Sportsline. So in addition, I'm going to make here, though, it's going to be Scotty Scheffler. I love the price point, plus 750 or plus 800 out there in the betting market. When you see a number like this pre in the middle of the tournament, I think it's important to understand what it means. So when you translate 750 to an implied percent, that is 11.8%. Do I think he has a greater than 11% chance of winning here? I do. My computer gives me a number of 14.5%, meaning this price point should be plus 590. He's leading this tournament, strokes gained T to green. Max Homa gained 4.3 strokes in the putting on the putting greens in round two. I think Scotty Scheffler can only go up. It's about as bad as it can get right now on the putting greens for him. If he has any success at all, can get himself within two or really even three shots of the lead heading into the final round, he's one of the most consistent golfers on the planet. Love him at plus 750. So you guys go in there with the uh, chase pack there, those five guys in that group of uh, T5 there, uh, Shefflin, Fowler, both of those guys shot a 16 out on Friday. Uh, they got some work to do here, but just five shots back of Max Homa. We'll watch it here this weekend. He is uh, Mike McClure and Doug Bell, CBS Sports Golf Analyst. Guys, enjoy the golf this weekend. Appreciate it. Enjoy. Thanks, Larry. Third round of the BMW Championship, Olympia Fields here, the FedEx Cup, outside of Chicago, Saturday. Third round, 3 p.m. Eastern. You can see the final round on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, both days on CBS, also streaming on Paramount Plus, and also on the CBS Sports app.